Philadelphia death metal. Yep. Uh, and then it was uh, a journey to get the first release out. We can talk about that. But I just want to start by saying thank you very much for taking the time uh, today. Uh, and I just want to say, um, I want to ask, I'm asking everyone because people want to know just how you're doing relative to um, COVID-19 and how the people that you work with, how is everyone doing that kind of stuff? And then we'll dig into the music. Sure. Um yeah, I mean, I'm doing fine as far as health wise. Um, my wife, you know, she's fortunate enough to be working from home, which is good. So it hasn't affected her. It's, it's affected a lot of her employees and stuff like that, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, and, and me obviously being a musician. Yes, it's it's um, it's affected all of us in the industry. You know, so, I mean, this is what we do. We go out and we tour and, you know, none of us are rich by by no means. And and, uh, you know, this is how we make a living. So. Uh, you know, that's a little bit difficult. I actually just found out about it. I heard a little bit about it. I actually filed for unemployment today for, uh, for these. And they, for the first time, they're doing that for self-employed um, musicians here. So I wasn't aware of it. First one I heard about it, I said, oh, yeah, OK, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, I filed for that. So, uh, you know, hopefully that all works out and stuff that helps out. But, but other than that, you know, just. Still just trying to, uh, just slugging away, making music. And, uh, you know, the plan is this year just to put a few records out and just, um, you know, be productive as possible. Beautiful. One thing that I've noticed is during this kind of fucked up time um, where it's difficult for a lot of artists and musicians to make ends meet, um, folks are doing a lot of stuff. They're offering online lessons. They're offering to master stuff, you know. All, so is there anything that that you're involved in right now that you want to just kind of put out there that you're kind of doing to try to help make ends meet right now? Uh, nothing really, you know, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm working on some records, um, you know, obviously the new emulation record, uh, my new music project called Shadows. And huh. that, that's something I'm really excited about. We're making a lot of progress with that. And, uh, you know, I have a few other things too that I'm working on. Uh, I have another project called the Eternus, which that, you know, unfortunately, that stopped the recording process, but that's like a old school kind of heavy metal, uh, I don't know, Candle Mass, Mercil Fade-ish kind of vibe, you know. Yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, but I'm other than that, I'm just very productive as far as being creative, which is great. You know, so Absolutely. You know, and I'm just trying to write as, you know, as much as I possibly can. That's fantastic. I've noticed you've done a playthrough for uh, Immolation Tune. You've been doing a a few things on social media to kind of yeah yeah we you know people like that kind of stuff you know they want to see and we're all bored as fuck right now so it's like this is the time to do it right yeah yeah so yeah we put it up there and you know fans seem to uh seem to like it so so Mm. so let's let's go back brother i want to go back talking late 80s Mm -hmm. talking philadelphia and i'm talking the band uh and maybe there was a few before that but Mm -hmm. goraphobia Okay. Well, bring, bring me back. Yeah, please. Yeah, in Philadelphia, when we started, there was nobody doing what we were doing. <laughs> so, uh, and if anybody says they were, they're full of crap, you know. <laughs> so there was, you know, but in Philly, Philly was mainly known for glam. So you had bands like, uh, you know, obviously like Cinderella, yeah. Britney Fox, and uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other bands, Tees, and you know. And then there was definitely, it was a pretty healthy punk scene, hardcore scene. There was bands like, um, obviously, the earliest, like Why Die, Pagan Babies, stuff like that. And I used to go to a lot of the hardcore shows because a lot of my friends were punks, and you know. But, um, you know, as far as as death metal goes, no, there was was nothing like that. In fact, we were, uh, when we started the band, we were, you know, we were ridiculed even by the thrash guys, you know. Mm. And same thing for Immolation because they started, we you know, pretty much started right around the same time. <clears throat> and in New York, you guys actually, you guys actually toured together at one point, didn't you? When you were with Gora? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that, that actually wasn't even with me. Cause I had left the band right before. Oh, okay. That. All right. Fair and enough. I was on that tour though. It's, that's a whole other story. <laughs> we'll get to that I was teching for immolation on that tour, you right know? On. So, but, um, yeah, so it, it was, you know, it was, it, we, like I said, we weren't accepted. Um, the only band that, showed any support for us was you know one of the the earliest real metal bands from philly which was amble bitch 
And those guys were really supportive of what we did. And, um, but yeah, it wasn't until we kind of, um, you know, we met up with like the immolation guys in person because we all wrote each other. You know, like me and Bob were pen pals since 88. And even before that, through I tape was, uh, trading and stuff, were you guys? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I knew uh, Andrew Sack, the bassist of Rigor Mortis. So we used, I used to trade with him. He did a fanzine, and I was a fan of Rigor Mortis. So fast forward, Rigor Mortis breaks up. I hear about this new band ex-members of rigor mortis you know so i actually wrote bob and i got the first demo and <clears throat> interviewed bob for uh, a fanzine i used to write for back then and um yeah we've been friends and then but fast forward we finally meet and uh we you know the immolation guys and john mcintee and will romer and these guys <clears throat> so we found our people you know yeah in philly but those guys were out in new york and north jersey so it was cool. It was like when we all finally kind of met up with each other. Absolutely. You know, it was a little little circle, you know, that we had. I, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for those meetings of the minds. of. <laughs> I mean, we're talking gorophobia. We're talking immolation. We're talking incantation. All of these bands. That's, that's, that's a book right there. There's a chapter in that book right in that meeting. Yeah. yeah. And there was a lot of other people that weren't, you know, musicians like, that were uh, there's uh, like a friend Jim Stanek. He did a um, a, uh, a compilation called Death Attack huh. in the 80s, and he actually put out I think some of the Profanatica and Hava Hedge stuff. And uh, you know, there's guys like Roy Fox, Ed Farsley, all these guys that were behind the scenes that were like fanzine writers and stuff like that. And you know, they were very instrumental in you know the beginnings of that scene. You know, absolutely. So yeah. you 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 were with Gorophobia back then. You guys, it, was it one or two demos that you um, put together in the? Well, 80s? in '89 we did like a we had like a rehearsal thing that we okay. trade around, and then 1990 we put out the first demo, which also became a seven inch, was uh, right. Surf UK released, and then we did uh, the Omen of Masochism seven inch in '91. You know, so yeah, that was that was it right there. That was the that was the releases that we put out. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, fast forward a number of years, we, we get the Mortal Repulsion release. Right. Talk to me about what's going on for Alex Books in the interim there. You're part of this band that is mythical. It kind of disappears well, from the scene for a while because I'm a huge fan. I, I talked to you about Mortal Repulsion and how much I mm -hmm. adore that album. Mm -hmm. Um and when, and when that came out, I was like, holy fucking shit. It seemed to come out of left field. And then that's where I kind of dug in right from the opening little syncopated drum riff to the mm -hmm. opening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim I, can, <laughs> I can tell right the open tune guitar. You're just the you're just banging the back of the guitar for those first that first well, note. The fucking well, thing's incredible. Yeah. So just yeah, talk to you. me about that middle, you know, like what's going on. Uh well that that all started was just me and Chris Gamble who who started the band. I mean, there's it's always the two of us, you know. Yeah. And um, we just kind of, you know, we talked about it. There was a couple different, we did like a reunion show in 2004. And, mm -hmm. You know, we did some other stuff, but it just never, you know, nothing serious, you know. So by, the, by 2007, we really discussed like, okay, we're going to really do this thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we wound up recruiting uh, Jim Rowe, who, you know, played on Onward to Go Gotha and Mortal uh, Mortal Throne and Nazarene, the first two incantation yes. records, and uh, he's you know he's still one of my all time favorite drummers, you know. Absolutely. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we had him. At, even John McEntee was in the band for for a while, you know. So up until when we recorded Mortal Repulsion, you know, he didn't play on the record, but uh, right, yeah, he was he was in the band for that that uh, portion, you know. Very so, cool. Very cool. Yeah. So you know, it was uh, and it was it was. For, for a little while, you know, it was it was it was pretty uh, productive. We did two records, and uh, you know, I'm proud of both of the records. And, Absolutely. You know, so, uh, and I'm glad we did it. You know. Yes, totally. I, I I think they're just fantastic releases. One of the things that I like about doing these interviews is talk is making sure that people who watch the interviews realize the history that's kind of behind each person's journey. And I put links down to the releases and stuff as well. So people can check that out. Yeah. Um, so you do the two releases with Gorophobia. And the next thing I know, 
you're fucking appearing on one of my favorite incantation albums, right? Now, mm -hmm. there's a whole life journey that's going on in between, but I'm just saying from the listener's perspective, suddenly I turn around and Vanquish and Vengeance is coming out, and you're a part of that release, man. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about how... So obviously you were crossing paths with John back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so just talk about that, and then how finally, like with Vanquish, you you were part of a release, and then well, that emerged. Yeah, both at the same time, both Gorephobia and I joined Incan at wow. the same time period in 2007. Okay. So, <clears throat> I think uh, I mean Vanquish and Vengeance was a very um, productive time. I think, and it was a really good uh, camaraderie that we had. In yeah. The band. Yes. Um, you know, it really came together really well, and you know, I'm proud of that record, obviously. And so, you know, writing together, me and John writing songs together, and um, Chuck Sherwood, you know, he 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 had a big part in a lot of the writing too, and same thing with Kyle. So it was it was, I got good memories of you know definitely making that record, and I I think that's why that record came out so good because mm -hmm. it was a really, and I think for both me and John around 2007, I think we both kind of like getting together we were both in a weird place and i think we kind of both re reinvigorated some inspiration yeah. in each other i think you know and some fire you know absolutely making that kind of music again you know because you know i think john was having he was having you know some some problems for a while in the band and just wasn't inspired so much with incan and i think when i kind of came into the into the fold it just kind of plus he had somebody from the old school with him, yeah. you know, so we're, you we're had all that like minded. You, oh, know? you, you had proven yourself because you had gone back fucking decades, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all started out together. So, exactly. And we all were, you know, even like when I think back, I'm not, not the elitist that I was back then, but we were like really elitist, you know, like mm. inhalation, agoraphobia, incantation, mortician, like, you know, we really didn't like anybody else outside right. our circle, you know? Right, right. But, uh, and we had, you know, we had a particular um, vision of what death metal was. And it really didn't kind of fit in with a lot of some of the other bands that were more like thrash bands, I guess. Yeah. That were yeah. trying to start playing death metal. But, you know, we always kind of didn't feel part of that. So there's definitely a, a, a like mindedness, you know, and, to all and then of this. the side as a whole subset is the whole technical death and all, all of the stuff on Yeah. There. I mean, we were more concerned about the uh, the feeling, you know, the yes. darkness in the music and the atmosphere than more of the technicality. I mean, Gorephobia, we got we kind of got more into the musical end, you know, things mm -hmm. and Merciful Fate and Maiden, bringing that kind of stuff Absolutely. in there. You know? But um, there's even some we, slide guitar, if I remember, if I remember from Negative Screams, there's even a little slide guitar. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. funny. I did do uh, slide guitar on Mortal Repulsion. There's a lot of slide guitar on that record and yeah. on this, the next record. So I don't know too oh. many death metal bands do slide guitar. <laughs> yeah, well, I always yeah. thought back when I originally heard that, so in particular, it's the song "Negative Screams," and it and yeah. right away it sets a mood, and you're like, "Whoa, what the fuck is going on?" Right? Yeah. And it was that's, very, that's the Pink Floyd influence, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the Dave Gilmore seeping into absolutely death metal totally. through yeah. Alex Books. Yeah, uh, that's yep. a, that's a really cool connection. So yeah. sorry I interrupted. So you were talking about kind of the releases with with Incantation. It was an incredibly productive time for you, and then also yeah. for John. You kind of helped each other out. Yeah. Um, now, now an album that gets released in 2016 and this is another one everyone who's going to watch this video is, is going to know uh about incantation they're all going to know about immolation gorephobia anybody who knows their shit should know gorephobia mm -hmm. the next project in 2016 is one i really want to shine the spotlight on for a second mm -hmm. because this is another one that to me i i, I think was uh, it didn't get the attention it should have. And, and that's the ruinous uh, Graves of Ce Ceaseless Death release. Um, mm -hmm. I, I fucking love that. That is a sick release. Um, so talk like to it. me. Yeah, talk to me a little bit. So that was after Incantation you you it, made that yeah. release. So talk to me a little uh, bit well, about that. Journey. How that came about was, yeah, ru ru well, Ruinous came about because I was um, – playing the funeral brown okay yeah and uh they're all friends of mine and there was a lot of issues in the band and the band the whole band just you know broke up so 
most of the Ruinous record was songs that me and Matt Medeiros, the guitarist vocalist of Ruinous, we had written for a, oh. a Next Feud Brown record. So I said, hey, you know, we wrote all these songs. We got to do something with it, you know. So long story short, me, him, and the drummer of uh, Funeral Brown, um, Sean, <coughs> went in the studio and yeah. you know, did it, you know. So it's so good. Yeah. Cool, it's, man. It's so fucking good. It's, it's a little bit different what I'm known for because it's a very, like, super tuned down, low kind of thing. Yes, and, yes. You know, it's not my normal kind of uh, what I'm known for, I guess. But, um, yeah, but was, you, I'm you, proud of the you, record. It just came out really well. You seem to feel very comfortable, though, there. It doesn't seem like you're uncomfortable in that space. You seem very comfortable pulling off some just fucking insanely brutal riffs, dude. Um, so that 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 is, yeah, that, that cool, for me man. is the one that, for the people who are seeing this and they're like, what the hell is that? That's the <laughs> one for me you totally have to check out because yeah, that yeah. flew under the radar and it's insanely good. Insanely yeah, good. cool, man. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. hey, thank yeah. you. I didn't make it. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. so, so bring me up to, to 2017, because now you're part of another insanely awesome band, and uh, and we're talking Immolation. Um, did you play on Atonement, or was that all Bob? No, I came, I came in at the end of the, uh, the record, but okay. it's a long story. I don't want to get into yeah. too much, but you do, you know, you Bill, do Bill was going to lead the band. You know, for the, and they knew that for a while. And Bill didn't leave the band on band terms or anything like that. We're all still very close friends with Bill, including myself. You know, uh, but Bill had to leave the band. You know, he they knew he was going to leave. And long story short, um, it was this conversation with me and Ross on the phone one day. And I think we were on the phone for maybe two hours. And then right at the end of the conversation, he's like, "Hey, uh, by the way, uh, how do you feel about uh, joining the band?" I'm like, "Huh?" <laughs> you know, the literal. So, uh, yeah, and this was in 2016, you know. So, yeah, I joined the band in 2016. Um, but, um, yeah, it was a no-brainer for me. I, I mean, you know, you, you're, I'm in a band with some of my best friends. And uh, also, musically, Immolation is more, uh, um, not the knocking incantation or anything like that, but it's more musically where, uh, in, you know, where I'm coming from, you know, it's like yeah. as a guitar player, Bob is very. There's a very similarity of how we approach the instrument, and right. it's just more of you know, kind of. In certain ways, it's like when I play his music, I uh, it's like playing my own music, you know. It's like it comes know, more I mean, intuitively to you from a yeah, it's, yeah, it's 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 very at home, and also you know, personally, like we're we're we're, we're all very like minded, you know, so we we get along really well. You know, yeah. so it was, it was a no brainer for me Absolutely. to join the band because at that point I was kind of like, you know, I'm just going to do my own thing. And I and, and the funny thing is, the true story is I had a conversation with my wife one night. I said, you know, mm-hmm. I'll never join another established band unless Immolation calls me. I'll play with those guys. But that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. You know, so. the metal gods said, and it shall be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. so so talk to me a little bit. You, you had mentioned um, uh, this project Shadows, which I'd love to have yes. you talk about. You mentioned that uh, there may be some immolation on the horizon. Yep. Grant, COVID is probably fucking up everybody's timeline. Yeah, thing. but it's it's not stopping the writing process. But yeah, immolation, oh. we, almost the whole record is done as far as you. written, you know. So we just got to figure out to get together and rehearse right. and get in the studio, obviously. Absolutely. Um, so that, you know, I'm super excited about the new record. It's it's um, there's certain similarities to Atonement, but I have to say the new stuff is definitely darker. Mm. If you can believe that, you know, wow. it's a darker record, you know, and, I, you know, I just think there's a lot more interesting things going on. So uh, we definitely achieved, I think, you know, as far as. The writing process it's 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 the songs are even more developed than the last record you know oh so i'm really you know sad. how to tease I, this I can't is wait a big fucking tease this is a big fucking tease brother <laughs> this so, is good yeah i'm really i think people are really really gonna dig it you know beautiful so um and, and talk to me about shadows what, what is this project yeah so shadows is um is me and the original agoraphobia guitarist henry petrowski so long story short 
you know, I've wanted to work with him forever. He's one of my best, best friends, you know, and uh, so it was kind of it started out of just, yeah, well, let's get together and we'll do something, you know, and it kind of turned into something much more serious and different than I expected. So long story short, um, I can't announce a singer yet, unfortunately. That's fine. <laughs> Eventually, That's fine. I will announce the vocalist once we uh, do a proper press release. But, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's the two of us. And uh, the producer engineer, Lance Walter, he was the uh, guitarist of an <coughs> old 80s thrash band from Philly called Dominance, which was Anvil Bitch prior. Very so, cool. he's, you know, he's, he's playing the bass and drums on the record. And... Uh, yeah, so the music is is different. It's not it's not death metal or anything like that. It's it's very dark avant garde metal. Uh, that's the only way I can describe it. And uh, for me, I you know if I'm going to do something outside of playing an emulation or something, um, I'm going to do something different musically. You know, I'm yeah, gonna push, you know, you know maybe, probably a lot of the fans that know you know are familiar with my music may be a little like, oh, this is strange. You know, maybe yeah. not be as into it, but that's fine. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So, but I'm really excited about what we're doing, you know. So. I mean, you 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 already tease a little bit by referencing people like David Gilmore. So it's obvious that your interests oh, you'll hear some of that are beyond sure. the tight, you know, genre that some people like to kind of. Move yeah, on. yeah. It's very dark. It's very atmospheric. Um, it's more rock based, I guess, in certain ways. But then we have stuff that's just very ambient and experimental Beautiful. and. And uh, yeah, it's it's just really exciting. It's something I'm just really really excited about. And uh, actually, I go back to the studio in a couple of days Beautiful. to Philadelphia to finish up the recording, and then we'll start the mix. You know. Beautiful. Well, I'll have to bug you on social media about that to get up. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds fascinating. Any yeah. other projects that uh, you're working with that you want to mention at this point? Or uh, I I have another one that is called Eternus, which is uh, yeah, right. it's more like kind of Candlemas, Merciful Fate kind of vibe. The, the vocalist is he's another old friend of mine. He's more like a Jeff Tate kind of vocalist. Ah. But the music is more like a, like a Candlemas Sabbath yeah. kind of. Kind yeah. of bomb. I'm, I'm yeah. up here in Seattle, so when you say Jeff Tate, I know you know I'm. I'm yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and it's funny because a lot of the kids, you know, they think, oh, you know, these death metal guys, like, you know, our influences were not. There was no death metal. We we grew up with yeah. hard rock from the '70s and early '80s heavy metal and stuff like that. So, yeah. so it's me kind of going paying tribute to my roots, you know, I, I should say, you know. I think a lot of people are doing that right now, it, it, feeling that it's okay to show that their tastes exist beyond the genre that they themselves got placed in. Right, right. You know, if somebody put a label on the type of music you made, that doesn't mean that you're that fucking label. Well, you're, I mean, even you know. in the 80s, you know, the, the, there wasn't really a death metal scene. When we were all starting out, the term death metal was used by, you know, I mean, Celtic Frost even, you know, I remember in interviews calling themselves death metal. And, yeah. you know, death obviously did in the underground and stuff like that, but you know, necrophagia might have used the term death metal, and I don't remember. But, uh, you know, there wasn't really, we were just kind of trying to push boundaries, I guess, as far as, um, you know, extreme metal. But we wanted it more dark, more heavier. And, you know, and it just came out the way it did, you know. Absolutely. So. Speaking of influences that people might be surprised by, what's one influence just off the top of your head? that somebody who uh, kind of is well-versed in your uh, discography would be really surprised to find out that you're into? Uh, maybe like P.J. Harvey. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> you know? yeah, totally. Oh, so, yeah, totally. you know, I like a lot of stuff. I mean, even in Immolation, like Bob and Ross are like, you know, we listen to like the Pesh Mode and stuff. So Steve, you know, we, we kill Steve with that because he hates it, you know. It's right. So funny. right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we... We're into, you know, a lot of new wave music from the 80s and things like that. You know, The Cure, Susie and yeah. Nancy, Sisters of Mercy. Um, Joy Division still is. Oh, Joy Division. Jesus absolutely. Christ. And yeah. I like New Order, too, as well. Yeah. You know? so, yes. I was but, bummed because one of the New Orders, not that it's, it'll never be the same without Peter. Uh, right. Bass, but they were bringing the big fucking tour uh, about an hour and a half outside of Seattle. We were one of the places they were coming. Oh, wow. Nice. But it all got canceled. And at this yeah. point with them. Isn't his son playing bass for Smashing Pumpkins? 
Peter Hook's son? Yeah. Yeah, he is, because he used to play with Peter right. in, in the band The Light, and then he hooked up with Billy from Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's weird. I, I actually saw Peter, I did photography for him in Seattle in October, and because he, he does the old albums now when he's out on tour. Um, and it, to see him rip through old Joy Division stuff was just, with the six-string bass yeah, yeah. two feet away, it's like, Here's a guy who wow. wrote some of the most iconic bass lines in the history of rock. Oh. It's, it's great to be right there. Like, oh. me, me and my wife got, we were front row uh, seats to Jeff Beck, you know, oh. and it was Jeff Beck and I think uh, Nancy Wilson opened up and it was just amazing. And, and just seeing a guy that at his age, just re still reinventing himself, you know, yeah. pushing boundaries on the guitar and just, destroying like I, you know who, what is he 75 76 yeah. something like that now and yeah. just really inspiring to see that and just be to be that close you know those people are the real deal you know it's yeah. like so yeah. I hear. so I, I got one last question for you and it's uh, i call it my time machine question um and that's if i could take you in a time machine back uh to meet yourself when you were 15 years old and you could give yourself one piece of advice and then i'm pulling you back into this crazy covid present that we now find ourselves in yeah what, what would that piece of advice be that's a really difficult question because the 15 year old self was a lot smarter than myself in my 20s that's for sure <laughs> so um but you know to be honest i don't think i'd change anything because the journey that I've been on um, has got me to the point where I'm at now, and I'm very happy in my life. Um, and, you know, I, I've learned from a lot of experiences and a lot of mistakes and things like that. So I don't think I would, would change anything, you know, because uh, it's been it's been an incredible journey, you know, life, really, you know, and just to to grow as a human being, you know, and uh, I think I've come a far away than my you know especially the, the guy that i was in my 20s for sure <laughs> so, yeah. I, yeah i i saw i saw an interview with you that was probably 20 years old this interview right because uh -huh. shit stays on youtube forever you know what life is right. like um, yeah and, yeah. and, and, you, and you, you talked about this period of your life a little bit your 20s. oh yeah well i mean i and, was you know alcoholism and all that kind of stuff and uh, you know luckily i, I uh, haven't had a drink in 18 years you know yeah. So, and I, I don't push that stuff on anybody. It's, it's just for me, you know, <laughs> trust me, I'm, I'm on the road with a bunch of a road crew of a bunch of raging Polish alcoholics. So, Absolutely. You know. <laughs> so I hear you. I've been three years sober myself. Oh, so that's my, awesome. My yeah. liver just was like enough. You fucker. You're going to die. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of the way it was for me. But what I yeah. will say is that when I see you now, and I think back to that video that's out there on the internet, you seem like a really fucking centered, balanced dude who's real appreciative for what you've gotten. And Thank what you. more What more can we ask for, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm happy. I, I have all the things that I want. You know, I'm, yeah. I, have a, I have an amazing marriage. I have a great relationship with my band members. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what else can you ask for? I do I do, do what I love, you know. So. And you're on and you're on some of the you're a part of some of the best fucking metal albums that I've ever listened to in my life. Uh -huh. so, Thank you. Well, well <laughs> We'll end it like that, Alex. I just yeah. I want to say thank you. Um, yeah. Be safe. Thank you. Let's get through this COVID bullshit. And uh, same, same to you. I'll see you in Seattle the next year around. Awesome, man. All right, okay. man. Have a good Have one. A good I'll one. let you know when this is done, okay? Cool, man. All right. Cheers. All right.